James Rapine wants to give you his game-by-game -game predictions for 2021. Let's go! You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Bengals fans, and welcome to another episode of the Lockdown Bengals podcast. I'm your host, Jake Lisko. He's your host, James Rapine, and he wants to give you his game-by-game -game predictions for the 2021 Bengals season. We'll get there in just a minute. Quick reminders, if you're new to the show, we're a five-days-a-week Bengals podcast, and this will be the one time this week I ask you if you're following on Odyssey or iTunes or Spotify or watching on YouTube to click the subscribe button to click the follow button and follow along if you like what we're doing. If you feel like it, go leave us a, a review on iTunes and, and um, make sure you're you're liking the YouTube videos. All those things help us quite a bit. So if you enjoy the content, I would enjoy if you did that small little thing for us. One other quick reminder, James and I participated in an ultimate season preview with the rest of the AFC North podcast hosts on the Lockdown Network that's out there on Odyssey as well. So go check that out. Ultimate season preview. James, we're going to do a mailbag today. We've got one bit of news to get to, and uh, we're going to go game by game. We're going to go through the 17 games really quick, and we're going to rattle off your prediction for this season. The bit of news to get to is the Bengals have signed a quarterback to the practice squad. James, he comes from Minnesota, and... Your guy, Drew Chrisman, has left the practice squad. Jake Browning, former Washington quarterback, will come to the Bengals and tell them everything he knows about the Minnesota Vikings offense. <laughs> How about that, right? They release him or wave him on September 1st. You're able to get him in town. Uh, used to be John Ross's running buddy, right, That uh, at Washington. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, we'll see how long Jake sticks. But we knew this, Jake. Uh, are you guys related? Anyways, that's that's not first names, huh? That's not how it works. Um, we we knew that they were going to add a third quarterback at some point, and it turns out they did it before week one, like I think both of us thought. Absolutely something that, I mean, I expected them to do sooner than this even, but yeah, ready at least for the first week of the regular season. And he comes from Minnesota. Luke Braun, who we'll be talking to tomorrow on the crossover episode, host of Locked on Vikings, had a funny tweet. He gets to do the one thing he's good at, the one strength he had, which is knowing the Minnesota offense is going to be used against the Vikings. His one strength, in the words of Luke, who apparently does not think very highly of Browning. Anyway, James, the week one opponent for the Bengals is the Minnesota Vikings. Let's go week by week in rapid fire fashion, win or loss at home against Minnesota. I like Minnesota's coaching. I trust their skill players more, and I don't trust the Bengals' defense and their ability to stop Dalvin Cook. We'll get into more of this game, but that's just a 50,000-foot view. Give me the Vikings this week. Man, we're starting off on a positive note. But the Bengals go to Chicago week two, and Andy Dalton, Blandy Dalton, Justin Fields doesn't matter. I think Joe Burrow gets it done at Soldier Field, and the Bengals – get to one and one. And, you know, that'd be exciting, especially with Pittsburgh week three. I know there are a lot of Bengals fans out there that think, oh, the Steelers, they're they're just awful. They're bad. Well, they're so bad that they're going to beat the Bengals week three in Pittsburgh. And that the final four game stretch, a game that you're going to be at, that I'm going to be at four days later against Jacksonville. Well, come on, Jake. I can't pick the Jaguars to beat the Bengals, can I? Well, a month out, the answer is no. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the Bengals. So after the first quarter of the season, I have the Bengals going two and two. Would you take that, Jake? I would take that. That would be fine. I think that there's a world where they get to three and one. I think that the first, I think all of these games actually are winnable games. Mm -hmm. It's just a question of what version of the Bengals team we're going to get this year and, and if they're going to take that step with Zach Taylor finally having his guys. The most interesting thing to me, James, about these 50,000 foot view picks is I think a lot of people that have gone about this same exercise would have flipped the, the win against Minnesota, the win against Chicago. A lot of people, I think, still very high on that Chicago defense. But 
that that was the one thing that stood out there is is you've mm-hmm. kind of gone the opposite direction on those first two games and a few others I've seen do the same thing. But let's get into the next four games, James, starting with Aaron Rodgers coming to Cincinnati. Yeah, I'm making my Aaron Rodgers face. You know, he may end up in Denver. He may end up in Washington next year, but he's still in Green Bay. And so he's handing out L's. And even to a guy like Joe Burrow at Paul Brown Stadium, I, I'm going to go with Aaron Rodgers in the reigning MVP. The next week, it's almost the complete opposite, right? You go from Aaron Rodgers to Jared Goff. And so I think the Bengals handle business there in Detroit. So now three and three, hovering around 500. Zach Taylor just added 50% of his win total in six weeks. Feels pretty good at Baltimore. Uh, That's a loss. Then at New York, the Jets. I like the Bengals in that one. So, man, it's, it's weird how this is working, but so far... Four and four after eight weeks. Should I ask you for a recap here? Should I just keep moving? You want me to keep moving? No, let's let's talk about this quickly. I think that the the highlight here is the three game road trip. That is is yeah. certainly what stands out to me. Detroit, Baltimore, New York. If they can mm-hmm. split those games, uh, split that that four game stretch that you talked about, I think you're relatively happy. It is interesting how uh, you know seesaw in nature. This schedule has played out so far for your preseason predictions here but the the real test will be week seven baltimore here like i don't think they're of the same class yet as green bay although they have beaten aaron Rodgers in the past uh i i don't know if they do it this time we'll see i i think i agree with you there but the baltimore test in particular especially if they are still not healthy yet at wide receiver they're still dealing with trying to figure out their offensive skill players this year how close is that game? We haven't mm-hmm. seen Joe Burrow go against Baltimore since he played arguably his worst professional game. And that is one that I have circled on the calendar for that reason. How does he do the second time around against Baltimore? And I'd ask you for the next four, James, but with the new NFL schedule, well, I guess we'll stick to four and we'll go long on the on the last one because there's no longer 16 games. Let's do four for the next one. Yeah, so then they hit the road, they or, or they come home, excuse me, and they play Cleveland. And I think that these games are going to be really close. I know Cleveland is considered the front runner uh, for some in the AFC North. I still like Baltimore over the Browns in this division, but it is close and talent wise, I get it. And and that's why I'm leaning Cleveland here, especially you come off a win against the Jets. You've been going back and forth. You're a young team. So you dropped a four and five going into the bye. And here's the part where I think Bengals fans are going to not like me. So they come out of the bye and they go to Las Vegas. I think a lot of fans are going to say, oh, that's a win. I don't have it as a win right now. I don't. And so instead of the four and five, do they get the five and five? They don't. They drop the four and six. And then you have Pittsburgh at home. And I think they can beat Pittsburgh. I don't think they're going to get swept in the division. And I think that this is a game that is going to be uh, not only winnable, but one that they get done. So five and six now. And this is going to be such a great matchup the, the following week. Justin Herbert versus Joe Burrow, the matchup we should have gotten week one last year that we didn't get. And obviously the Chargers uh, squeaked out a win at Paul Brown Stadium. And I, I think they do the same again here. I'm sorry. I just do. I think they're just a little farther along. Derwin James, you know, is is such a stud. Uh, and, and he's back on that defense. And I, I really like what they're building there. They really invested in that offensive line. Now we'll see. Right. But uh, Austin Eckler, is anyone stopping that guy? What linebacker on this team is covering Austin Eckler? I'm just going to make a face about that. So I'll take the Chargers there. And um, that's that's another set of four, Jake. So now it is your turn. The Raiders game is very interesting to me because the Bengals historically have had a hard time in the black hole. And instead, they're now going to have a chance to go to the new black hole, as it were, and see if see if they can get one done. Get a win done post by they've had their issues post by they've had their issues with with Oakland in the past. So that one's very interesting. And then, as you said, James, that matchup with the Chargers also going to be a very interesting game. We'll see how healthy the Chargers are at this point. This is a franchise that is similarly cursed to the mm-hmm. Bengals, and they seem to try to remake their offensive line every year. Maybe this is the year they've done it right. Maybe this is a year Bosa stays healthy and Austin Eckler stays healthy and Derwin James stays healthy, none of which were true last year. And so that one, that late in the season is a big old we'll see. But let's finish it up with five games, James, as 
we look at the last five on the schedule. So five left. The Bengals are five and seven. They host San Francisco. Brutal. This is their 17th game. They have to play the San Francisco 49ers, a team that at this stage in the year could be starting Trey Lance, his feet, his arm, even if not a safe play in Jimmy Garoppolo, when healthy, wins a bunch of games. I like the 49ers in this one. So you fall to five and eight. Then you hit the road and you have to go to Denver with the altitude. I think Denver, kind of an underrated sleepy team, but am I am I taking Teddy Bridgewater over Joe Burrow, even though he's got some weapons? The answer is no. And I get it, Von Miller in that defense. And I can't do that. So now you're at six and eight with, what, what do we got? Three games left. Baltimore, can they get over the Baltimore hump at six and eight, which outside looking in playoffs wise right now at six and eight, maybe you're in the hunt of the playoff picture, but you're not after this game against Baltimore. I think they lose to Baltimore again. What have we seen out of this defense just in general against Lamar Jackson until they slow him down? How can you pick the Bengals against Baltimore? So they fall to six and nine Kansas city. I think Kansas city probably needs this game. It's going to be a good one. I think the Bengals could keep up with them, but I have them losing to the Chiefs. So six and 10, but there's another game. And I don't think that they're going to get swept by the Browns another year. I just don't think that's going to happen. They played them really close last year. It's going to be a cold Cleveland game up there at First Energy Stadium. And I have the Bengals winning that one. And uh, Burrow takes down Baker Mayfield for the first time in uh, in his NFL career so seven and ten Bengals fans are gonna hate me but that's uh, that's how I'm feeling today and that's an if Baker plays and that's an if Patrick Mahomes plays you know who knows what's happening late in the season who knows what's happening health-wise with all these teams at that point and that is the beauty of the NFL season that's why we play the games because every way we see the season before it starts it's not how it's gonna look when we get to some of these weeks especially when we get into the winter. Coming up next, James, let's get into our first midweek mailbag of the 2021 season. We just played the schedule game, which means football season is here. And as always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. You can get all the updated odds, prop bets, contests, including online's biggest half million dollar NFL mega contest and the world's largest $200,000 NFL survivor contest. Plus maybe you think Joe Burrow is going to lead the Bengals to 10 and seven, not seven and 10 and win the NFL's comeback player of the year. Maybe he throws for 5k. Well, if you think that's the case, you can wager and bet at betonline.ag. So go there now, sign up today and use promo code locked on for your 100% welcome bonus. Plus The opening day super promo is here as well. It's Buccaneers, it's Dallas, and the Cowboys on Thursday night football. And you can get up to $25 refunded if you wager and you lose on that game with promo code NFL100. So it's free money. Take advantage of it. it. We talk about it all the time. So go there now. BetOnline.ag, promo code locked on. BetOnline, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. James, that's uh, it's exciting stuff. The regular season here, we, we've been talking about it for weeks. And mm-hmm. by the time a lot of people are listening to this, the Bengals will be having their first regular season practice. And we finally get a look at an official injury report, which for many is not very exciting, but for me is the true mark of the, the regular season <laughs> being here. You know, we talk a lot about Trey Wayne's injury and stuff. Well, now the Bengals actually have to tell us what body part is injured hamstring we know we know that for him but you don't know that for everybody and the injury reports are now mandatory so everyone that always asks us about injuries well now we have a resource that the Bengals are required to share but let's dive into this mailbag our first question this week this season James comes from I believe a new question asker in our mailbag I don't recall seeing this name in the past Jake Bowling J Bowling 66 on Twitter would like to know who will score the Bengals' first touchdown of 2021. I believe he goes by Uno. It's going to be Jamar Chase. After all the stuff that's gone on, all this craziness about Jamar Chase, and in some of it's right, right? I mean, I talk about it, the drops. But the crazy part of it is, is this idea that Jamar Chase is going to be a bust and that he can't play. The dude can play. 
the Bengals use him all over the field. And I think they're going to feature him. I think he's a big part of this offense. And, uh, you know, Tyler Boyd may get him down the field. T. Higgins might make a play. Joe Mixon. But I'm rolling with Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase. First touchdown in the first quarter Sunday's game against Minnesota. I could see Jamar Chase on a deep ball, like an early shot play, because I'm I'm like 100% sure there will be a shot play on the first drive. Unless unless things go terribly and like the, it goes exactly how it did in Joe Burrow's three snaps in his preseason game, there's going to be a shot play, I think, in like mm-hmm. the first several plays of, of the game. Maybe not. I could be wrong. That's just a feeling that I have. So that's how I see it being Jamar Chase. If it's not, if they get down to the red zone, I, I don't think it's Chase. I think it's between like Higgins and a tight end. Maybe it's Drew Sample. Maybe it's Joe Mixon. Yeah. But there you go. I don't necessarily yeah. go with one of the, like the big gaudy outside skill guys like Jamar mm-hmm. Chase because I don't know how many touchdowns Jamar is going to score this year. But if it is Chase, that Ooh. I mean like seven, right? Like I don't think it's going to be like 12 or 14. I was going to say think. over under eight. So you would take the under. I think I would narrowly take the under. Yeah, because I'm not wow. sure with the, the weapons they have. And the I mean, Jamar is not the guy that I think of on this team. And I think that's the red zone weapon. He's he, T Higgins is and, and Joe Mixon is and, and they love throwing to tight ends. And, you know, we saw, well, you generally see across the NFL, how easy it is to scheme a tight end open in the red zone. It's, it's just like, there's free touchdowns to tight ends. If you're inside the three yard line, that's just how the NFL seems to work. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. The, the way that I see Jamar Chase getting above eight is if they really hit on that deep ball, right? Cause you go back to LSU and so many of those touchdowns came on deep vertical shots. And mm-hmm. that's one of those things where like, I think it should come back because they were so good at it at LSU, but does it happen right away? How long does it take? Does it happen? Because we didn't see it like at all last year and we were deprived of six games of Joe Burrow where maybe that gets on track, but that's, that's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I mean I, we, we haven't I mean, seen the drops too much on the deep stuff, but yeah, I mean, that's a fair point, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. There hasn't, I, I think there was one all camp one. Yeah. What, you know, where it was, that's it. So um, next question comes from Matthew Lacey, which starter is in uh, the most danger of losing his starting job? I think that this has got to be Xavier Suofilo, but the, the dark horse I'm not even going to say it. Let's just stick on Dave, Xavier Suofilo. I think Xavier Suofilo at right guard probably has the most tenuous hold on his job because Jackson Carmen was a second round pick and you have to believe he's knocking at the door and you hope that he stays motivated the way we saw him putting in the extra work in the preseason and that he really pushes and, and eventually takes over. And the Bengals are also incentivized to do this. Mm-hmm. Whether you like it or not, the draft status of players contributes matters. to the way they're deployed by teams For and sure. he was a second round pick they're going to want to get him into the lineup who who else james is in danger of losing their job yeah it's funny because it, like let's say jamar chase right if he had these drop issues and was a fifth rounder he's not starting sunday you know it, it's just it's part of it right it's just the, what they believe the confidence in that player anyways yeah i think um who it's tough to me larry Ogunjobi. Probably if it's not Xavier Suofilo, just because of BJ Hill, could BJ Hill uh, eventually overtake him? You know, I, but it's really a rotation. They're all going to play. So is it, does it really matter? And it's tough. Like Mixon's not in danger. I don't think any of the starting receivers, I don't think any of the starting corners, I guess if Eli Apple just balls out, but are you really benching Trey Waynes? No. Hell no. no. Jesse Bates and Ron Bell aren't in danger. All right. Yeah. Who's your dark horse? Go ahead and say it. Go ahead. I'm, I'm not going to say my dark horse, but the wow. other guy that I think that, that we haven't thought about Jordan Evans is currently, I think the starting nickel wow. linebacker. And I think Akeem Davis Gaither needs to continue to push for that. Jermaine Pratt maybe pushes for that, but I, I believe, and we'll find out that Jordan Evans is still the starting nickel backer. And so that's yeah. one that I see in danger. And what sucks is they don't list it on the depth chart, right? So yeah. Evans listed yeah. as a backup. So it's not like that's a specific thing, unfortunately. Yeah. Next question comes from DD Merritt James. Why play Eli Apple outside instead of putting him in the nickel where Mike Hilton, supposedly the better player plays? Because Mike Hilton is a nickel cornerback and Mike Hilton was signed here to make an impact from that spot and blitz from that spot. And, and make plays and be a playmaker in that area. That's what he is. And they knew that going in. And I, 
it's one of the more interesting things on Sunday, man. How do they use him? How do they generate pressure as a whole on defense? And so that's that. I mean, I don't think Mike Hilton is ever going to get consideration on the outside. Uh, it's just not his game. And so, yeah, it's Eli Apple. And by the way, this is why they signed Eli Apple. They wanted him to come in and compete for that job with Darius Phillips to be that fourth corner. And he won the job and he did have a good camp. He was dinged up at, at times, but he's a first round talent and he'll, he'll get a chance to, to show that on Sunday as he tried to, tries to, you know, redeem himself, so to speak. First round talent, not for everybody. Let's just say not for everybody was Eli Apple a first round talent, but that is where he was drafted. The other thing first that plays pick, into yeah. this is, is size. Mike Hilton, smaller guy. Generally, you're facing bigger guys on the outside. So there's just physicality reasons that you would have a guy in the slot versus outside. But yeah, I mean, your, your biggest point is, is correct. He's there to be dynamic from the slot. That's how they want to use him. And that's where Hilton's going to play. Also worth noting on the Bengals' first official depth chart, Darius Phillips backing up Chidobe Awuzie instead of being listed as the third corner behind Eli Apple. They just list him as a backup on the other side, on the outside. Let's finish our mailbag, James, coming up next. Before that, this episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast is brought to you by Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar ever. Everybody knows how much James and I love these built bars, I think they're a little bit more associated with James and those ever growing shoulders than me, but they can be for you too with their nine delicious flavors from coconut, coconut almond to cherry and raspberry, the mint brownie, the peanut butter brownie, the double chocolate, the salted caramel. There is something for everybody and they're healthy too. Like I mentioned, 17 grams of protein, 130 calories, just four grams of sugar. And it's just crazy to think that all of these protein bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. Go check them out right now at builtbar.com. Use promo code LOCKED15. You'll save 15% on your next order. Again, that's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at builtbar.com. Football season is back, and that means it's time for pools. Pool season. No, I'm not talking summer. I'm talking about different pools in your office or with your friends. We love them, right? But it can be a challenge. Well, guess what? Runyourpool.com makes it easier. It's the premier sports pool hosting service. Run Your Pool makes it so simple to run a pool with friends, family, coworkers, a mixture of everybody. And they offer dozens of formats, survivor, pick them, squares, confidence pools, 33 and more. And they format for NFL, college football, one week games, full season playoffs. Anything you need, you can get it at runyourpool.com. Join nearly 2 million football fans to make every game action pack this season. You can check them out today and get $10 off at runyourpool.com slash locked on or use our promo code locked on at checkout anywhere and everywhere in the world. So you want to get Jake involved in a pool and he's at Canada, you can do it. I'm in Cincinnati, you're in Florida, it doesn't matter. All you got to do is go to runyourpool.com slash locked on and have your pool up and running in minutes. Again, runyourpool.com slash locked on. James, it's time to finish up our first mailbag of the yeah, 2021 man. NFL season. Our next question comes from Lori Snyder at Lori USAF on mm -hmm. Twitter. She would like to know what's going on with Auden Tate, James. Apparently, we're not talking mm -hmm. enough about Auden Tate. She writes that it seems he gets left out when discussing wide receivers. He's our guy. We don't diss our own, do we? And are we, I don't know if anyone's dissing Auden Tate, but what's going on with Auden Tate, James? Nothing. He's the, the Bengals' fourth receiver, and I think he's exactly that. I mean, he's going to have, you know, a couple touchdowns here or there. He's going to be a reliable fourth option that you can use in the red zone, that he, he's going to thrive in contested catch situations. But he's not a top option at receiver. He's just limited in what he does. And so that's why – Partially why you see some of these highlight catches, I think, is because he's not getting the separation and he needs to make him that way. I'm not knocking Tate. I think he's a great fourth option, but uh, that's what he is. And, uh, you know, if someone goes down, if Jamar Chase gets dinged up or T. Higgins gets dinged up, Auden Tate's the first one off the bench. And you're going to see him anyway. So you'll see him on Sunday. He'll be in. They're going to run some four wide sets. Don't you worry. Joe Burrow likes that. He wants five 
five out there. Let's go empty. Let me diagnose and let me distribute. That's what he'll do. And uh, and you do those four with Mixon and, and or maybe you go a tight end. You could certainly make that work. So it's uh, it's one of those things where Auden Tate is a fan favorite, but there's, I think, a ceiling to his game and the Bengals feel that way. And that's why he's the, the fourth receiver. I think that somebody is going to pay Auden Tate to be a wide receiver too. Somebody in the wow. NFL, though. I, wow. I just, if he hits free agency, I think that's the nature of free agency. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe he just gets totally hidden and can't get on the field this year, and, and that's not the case. But even though I don't know how much we're going to see four wide, I might actually be surprised if we actually see four receivers on the field. You're seeing practice more than me. Maybe they're going out there and practice in this set. I think it's going to be... 80% 11 personnel, and occasionally you're going to see two tight ends. So 11 personnel is three receivers, one receiver, one tight end. And so I might be a little surprised to see Auden Tate out there as the fourth guy in a four-receiver set, but I don't think that you're not going to see Auden Tate. I think he's probably going to get, I don't know, like roughly 10%, 10 to 20% of the team snaps at wide receiver. They'll rotate. T Higgins and Jamar chase off the field when they go deep. This is something that we saw them do last year to get guys rest after they've just sprinted, you know, 40, 50 yards down the field. They'll, they'll bring in another guy after that a lot of times. And you also will see them potentially use Auden Tate as that, you know, small tight end. He, the, people ask us this from time to time and they, they do it. The Bengals do at times bring Auden Tate in tight, to around where a tight end would line up and use him from that spot. So you'll see if, if this is a week that happens or not, that's a time that he would get on the field as well. So there will be opportunities for Auden Tate. It's just, who are you taking off the field for him on an every down basis? That guy is just yeah. not on this team right now. If, if these players T Higgins and Jamar chase are who we think they are. And I wish on Tate was like 30 pounds heavier and could block with them. Cause then you're right. He could be that tight end that, uh, you know, that gives you those matchup yep. advantages. Unfortunately, that isn't the case. Uh, next question comes from Bengals rotational piece. Is it me or has Jackson Carmen steadily improved throughout the season or preseason rather? And how likely is it that we could eventually seeing him as in Jackson Carmen and Deontay Smith as the starting guards? Yeah, so we talked about this a little bit, right? With Xavier Suofilo potentially being the guy that gets pushed. Another guy that might get pushed is Quentin Spain. And mm -hmm. that's because Deontay Smith could be really good. He, he might be really good. Coming from ECU to the NFL, adding 30 pounds, getting real coaching for the first time in his career. He has incredible physical tools at his height, at his weight, with the 35-inch arms that we talk about. He, he might be really good, and I think he's probably a better scheme fit long-term than, than is Quentin Spain in the wide zone scheme where you're looking for athleticism from your guards. They need to move, get out in space, climb to the second level, and Quentin Spain is a fine player. I, I think just from a skill, per, from, from not a skill, from a scheme perspective, Deontay Smith may be the long-term fit there. Same could be true for Jackson Carmen, who moves very well as well, for a guard. If he does what this coaching staff has talked about and, and treats this as his professional job and has his weight in check and is, is doing the technique, trusting the technique that he's getting taught, I think he will take over this year. I think Carmen probably before Smith, because I think Xavier Suofilo has a, has a bigger history of, you know, injuries, not holding up under a full workload and, so we'll see what happens there. And also there's a draft status, right? We talked about this earlier. Jackson Carmen, that second round draft status is going to matter. For sure. No, it does. And I wouldn't be shocked if both guys uh, are in the mix, you know, sooner rather than later. Deontay Smith, if, if he didn't get uh, dehydrated, I, I think he was very much in the mix there at both spots. I think he would have gotten some reps at right guard and they would have really tried to see if he was ready to go, which – Think about back to the draft. I thought he was a redshirt type player. I know we had expectations for Carmen, but Smith is exceeded my expectations tenfold and uh, wouldn't be shocked at all if we see him in the mix, maybe after the first quarter of the year uh, or sooner if there's an injury, of course. Our next question is about a kicker, James. A few people asked about Evan McPherson, one of them referencing my hatred for kickers. Apparently I hate kickers now. 
because I wouldn't draft a kicker. I, I hate kickers. <sighs> and this is just what my reality is. Uh, turns out I love Evan McPherson and Kyle you Phelps. Better. Kyle Phelps 92 has a question. Considering the impact of Randy Bullock last year, and I think he means negatively, how much does Evan McPherson impact your confidence in this team's ability to close out some of these close games? My calves hurt just thinking about Randy Bullock. Anyways, um, yeah, I think it, it certainly is an impact. It, it's a big impact because you're going up against a defense led by Mike Zimmer that got embarrassed at times last year and didn't play up to par. And when you have a quarterback coming back from what he's coming back from, we have questions about the offensive line. Hell, we have questions about the play caller and head coach and Zach Taylor. Any way you can get points, the easier you can get points, the better. And if they get the ball – and their offense has struggled for most of the first half, which is semi-likely on Sunday because they've had three plays together all season, right, or since November, um, then to me, and it, that wasn't the same team, obviously, then to me, you still feel like, all right, well, let's go try to get into field goal range because we got the guy. And if we get to the 42, we have a shot. Or we get to the 46, we have a shot. And th that's it. I mean, he's he's that good. He at least has the potential to be that good. So, yeah, it's a weapon, and it certainly helps them as they try to get into a rhythm and be that offense that I think their ceiling is, right, that 30-point-a-game offense. Evan McPherson certainly helps that cause. You think they're kicking a 64-yard field goal attempt with Evan McPherson in week one? He made a 57. Why wouldn't you? I would try it. You, you wouldn't try it at the gun? Oh, yeah, if, if time was expiring. I wouldn't try yeah. it in the first quarter. No, first half, at the end of the first half. Oh, okay. So, like, if they've yeah. been struggling and they're just, you know, and, you know, Jamar oh, yeah, Chase with, breaks a tackle and gets across the 50. Yeah. With with, McPher with McPherson, absolutely. You give it the treatment that the Ravens do with Justin Tucker. You you definitely, like, if you're starting at your own 20 or 25 or whatever, you see if you can get 30 yards real quick and run one more play and just give it a chance. Yeah, nice. absolutely. Absolutely. Next question. And this is for you, Jake. What single if – Guarantees a Bengals win and a Jake Lisko woo on Sunday. Only one if. I don't know if what one singular factor guarantees a win. And the things that guarantee a woo are different from the things that guarantee a win. I think that the single factor that if it goes right, will most likely lead to a Bengals win is stopping Dalvin Cook. If the Bengals can control the Minnesota running game, that offense, despite how good Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson are, I think it's a lot worse. I think a lot of the efficacy of that offense is that they can keep you off balance, that they can run the ball so well with Dalvin Cook. He can rip them off. I'm not talking just like, averaging five yards a carry. I'm talking Dalvin Cook. I, I would put him at pretty likely to score a 30-yard touchdown or something like that just because of who he is and his track record. He's very good. If he's not very good, then Kirk Cousins is straight drop back passing. And Kirk Cousins is not a player that you have confidence in straight drop back passing, much the same way you had no confidence in Andy Dalton in pure passing situations. Kirk is a better player than Andy Dalton which is something that took me a long time to realize. Uh, but he he's still not a guy you want dropping back without play action, without any guesswork from the defense. If you know he's throwing, then you're in a good place as a Bengals defense. And if you know he's throwing, then you're probably also leading in that game. So I would say if the Bengals can, can put the clamps on Dalvin Cook with their revamped defensive line and this emphasis they've placed on stopping the run, that puts them in the best position to win. Now, that is not something that will guarantee a woo. These are different things, and, and I know he asked for one, but I'm not wooing if they just win the game. It needs to be what? a convincing blowout. No, this is a winnable game. This is a regular season is, opener. The head coach has won six games in two years. It, I don't care. That's rel It's a, a seventh of his wins if he wins. I, I don't care. You, you can woo. Bengals fans should woo. I'm not going to woo on this podcast Maybe for beating a team. Booing. No, you, nobody gets to dictate when I woo, but me, first off, that's okay. a rule. Second, if it was the Packers 
then yeah. If it was the Chiefs, then yeah, this is a winnable game at home. And and that's it. If it's a game that I think they can win and they win, great. But unless it's like a moral victory, like they've lost six in a row and then they win a game they should win and we want to get excited about it. No, it's it's a higher standard than that. It's got to be a higher standard this year, man. I'm raising okay. it. The bar has been raised. Well, Last question, James, a fantasy question. Yeah. Lottie at STL Kiss wants to know, who would you start in fantasy between the three Bengals starting receivers, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase? My guy, Lonnie. Uh, well, it depends. Look, are, are you looking for stability or are you looking for pop? You know, Tyler Boyd's going to be that solid, you know, low-end wide receiver two, high-end wide receiver three in PPR. T. Higgins has wide receiver one potential. Jamar Chase has wide receiver one potential. In PPR leagues, I like Chase more than Higgins. I think he's going to be targeted more and used – in a variety of ways that Higgins won't be just based on what I've watched in practice. And I think it's a, a, a crazy overreaction by fantasy football owners that Jamar Chase is falling. Like he's going like the eighth pick of the seventh round last I checked at 12 team. And he's by far the third Bengals receiver going off the board, uh, which is insane and a crazy overreaction of what's happened. So depends on the format, but PPR uh, upside. I, I actually, I lean chase PPR, Stability, Boyd, Standard Leagues, T. Higgins. I hope that helps. I'd be happy to have all three, my guy, Lonnie, and St. Louis. What about you, Jake? Yeah, I like Higgins in Standard Leagues, and I like Boyd in PPR Leagues. I would really like to like Jamar Chase, but the, the only thing holding me back is he's a rookie who didn't dominate in preseason and didn't dominate in camp. It's not like It's not like A.J. Green coming into the league, and he had his own – learning growing pains whatever t higgins by the way also it was pointed out recently i think it was paul who wrote about this might have been somebody else might have been jay t higgins had nine drops last year by the way just saying still really optimistic about t higgins right so uh that's how much drops drops matter Yeah. yeah and so uh i i think i just am personally if i have other choices then if I have other comparable choices, then Chase is on the bench for week one. And maybe you live to regret it, but if you live to regret it, then you just start him the rest of the way and it's fine. And so for me, it's just, he's a rookie wide receiver. Rookie wide receivers tend to have a breaking in period and he didn't dominate in camp or pri- or, or, or the preseason. And so because of that, I'm going to wait and see and maybe start him in week two, if, if I have fair. other options. That's fair. You play it safe. That, that being said, buckle up, because I think Patrick Peterson is going to be busy chasing chase put him on the highlight tape as jamar would say that's going to do it for this episode of the lockdown bengals podcast we're back tomorrow with our first crossover episode of the year luke braun from lockdown vikings joining us to discuss what's going on in minnesota with our guy mike zimmer until next time bengals fans who day and have a good one